At the end of July, Melissa and I sailed west to the Pines to spend the night. We wanted to check out the old youth camp where I spent much of my summers a couple decades ago. It was a perfect sail over and we anchored in a little bay about half a mile south of the camp. It felt very isolated and any other humans were far away. Soon after we anchored, we ventured to land and down the shoreline toward the camp. My family ran the place from 1997 until they were forced to abandon it about five years ago. Almost everything was the same as I remember, untouched since the days when we last spent our efforts making a place where kids could spend a week playing at the lake, singing, learning about God, riding horses, swimming, campfires, and all the fun you can imagine in such a beautiful place on Fort Peck Lake. One of the only notable changes was the huge stockpile of gravel that was dumped some years ago for purposes unknown to me. You can see how massive it is from this view in Google Earth. It was a little sad seeing the work of so many people for so many years left to decay. After our tour of the camp, we hiked back where the sailboat was anchored, planning to cook a nice steak on a charcoal grill. We didn't bring the dinghy on this trip, so to get from the sailboat to shore, Melissa and I would sit on our stand-up paddleboard and paddle it like a canoe. It was tippy and we got wet, but at least the water was warm. Before we could light the grill, we started getting weather alerts. A huge storm had formed and was predicted to hit our location soon with a 100% chance of large hail. Finally, we decided that if things got bad, our chances of survival were best on land. So we got back on the paddleboard and paddled like hell. Then we ran through the brush and beach overgrown with Canadian thistle. Melissa's sandals were failing and it was with considerable pain and panic that we finally reached the cover of the chapel. Within seconds, the first hailstones fell from the sky. We watched and waited for things to settle down, but it was getting dark. So we picked our way back down to the water, slipping and sliding all the way in the mix of gumbo mud and rain and hailstones. Girl. 
It was dark now, but we eventually managed to reach the Isla Bella without capsizing our paddleboard. The wild motion of the boat made it impossible to stay in the cabin without getting sick, so we decided to sleep in the cockpit under the stars. The next day was beautiful. We lifted anchor and enjoyed a good breeze all the way back to Fort Peck. It was nice to be safely back to civilization. One would think my wife would have strangled me by now after all the roughing it and risking our lives and for the cuts in her feet and short night of sleep, but no. She was ecstatic about our adventure and was a wonderful trooper the whole time. Nobody got hurt, we escaped with only a couple hail dents on the barbecue grill and a wildlife experience we'll never forget. Thank you.